From the morning reading, the spider falls to short-term support and buyers create bounds. All 10 sectors moved lower and on Friday, XLF, XLV, and XLU were the strongest sectors while XLV was the weakest sector. Well, futures fell a dollar and one cents to close at 49.55. For the week ended October 7th, just one of 10 sectors moved higher. That was XLF, which was up fairly nicely at 1.66%. In other news, the S&P 500 snapshot, a modest Friday loss, snaps the three-week rally. The highly anticipated pre-open release of the September employment report triggered some gyrations at the market open. The two headline data items, the number of new jobs and the unemployment rate, were a bit below expectations, but the overall report was perfectly sound. The S&P 500 hit its 0.24% intraday high in the opening seconds and sold off in a couple of waves to its negative 0.74% intraday low shortly before the lunch hour. An early afternoon bounce trimmed the loss and the index closed with a 0.33% loss. The 500's negative 0.67 loss for the week snapped the three-week rally. The yield on the 10-year note closed down two basis points at 1.73%. The major indices have massed some underlying volatility. Stocks have been basically nowhere for a month, but there hasn't stopped some wild trading under the surface intraday. Over the past month, stocks have seen a number of days with extremely high tick readings when everyone is buying everything at the same time. There have also been a large number of extremely low negative tick readings when everyone is selling. Such all-in and all-out trading usually occurs during periods of extreme market volatility. The S&P 500 has formed double inside weeks. The narrowing range means that the index has had a lower high and a lower low for two weeks in a row. This has been highly unusual in recent decades, occurring only twice in the past 20 years, in 2000 and 2008. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6:10 Mountain Time, and I am recording this in preparation for the market day of October the 10th, 2016. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's get back to the morning report. And at the time of this cut, we've got some rather significant overnight action leading into our morning. At the time of this cut, the S&P futures were up nearly half a percent, as were the Russell futures. NASDAQ futures were up over a third of a percent, as was the Dow futures. Crude oil is up nearly a percent. Euro is down about 0.2, so a bit below scratch. You're the, um, let's see here, the long bonds down about half a percent, and gold is up about three quarters of a percent. In overseas action, China's um, back online, and they're up 1.45 percent, and Hong Kong is down nearly half a percent. Japan's down about a quarter of a percent. Germany's up nearly one percent. Hong Kong is... Well, I should say United Kingdom is up over a quarter of a percent. <laughs> now, I just noticed here that three of these dates are Friday's dates. So, it may be possible that China, Hong Kong, and Japan were open on Friday but are not open today. So, um, just a second here. Okay, I double check. The um, China date, this data is for today, 1010. Hong Kong and Japan, though, this is Friday data, so it doesn't appear that they're open um, this morning, but this is Friday's data on those two. So just be aware of that. Anyhow, uh, moving forward, in terms of macroeconomic reports for the United States of note, 
we have nothing today. Looking forward to tomorrow. We have nothing of note. So a couple of yellow flag reports, very, very low activity in terms of being able to impact the market from any kind of expected activity. In terms of volatility, short-term VIX it continues to drop. It's at 11.47. SKU still benign. IV percentiles still very low. On the S&P at 24, the Russell 12, the NASDAQ at 18, and the Dow a 25. There were um, no standard deviation moves put in on the S&P, NASDAQ, and Dow on Friday, but the Russell did put in a negative one standard deviation move. So, and it was just a little bit over a one, it was 1.05. So um, that one definitely did have a bit of a move. But in relative terms, this last week was very quiet. Indeed, you heard one of the morning authors mention that you had on the weekly candles, you know, back to back inside weeks. And we can see that certainly in these are dailies, but still um, we can see how we've had this continuing compression. And, um, you know, we're right on the borderline of being able to say that we're still inside this triangle. Certainly we pierced both sides. But the fact that we closed inside um, or right at the inside of the um, triangle um, support side on Thursday, actually that would be Friday's action, sorry, um, and this is last night coming into this morning's action, and we're still nestled right inside the very, very point, the very apex of this triangle. Uh, but at some point, we're going to degrade out of this and break away, and we're going to go into a sideways con consolidation pattern and more of a, um, a rectangle, it would seem. Um, so we'll see where that goes in the next day or two. But um, no matter what, whether we actually break out of this pattern or we um, continue sideways, it's obvious that we're in a consolidation pattern and we continue to close down on that consolidation pattern. And um, at some point, that's going to result in a breakout. So we just have to be waiting for the eventual breakout. Right now, it's terribly difficult to say which way that breakout would go uh, based on the price action in the chart. Right now, it's smacking our cloud. And this is the same thing we've been talking about with uh, the Dow as well. Smack in the cloud, very, very neutral pattern here and not giving a lot of indication as to which way it would break. Now, NASDAQ is more bullish and it's also been in a sideways consolidation pattern, but it's up against resistance and, um, you know, being above the cloud and everything, it, it certainly is more bullish. And then the Russell also has been um, hobbling along at just above the cloud. So um, it's kind of it's stuck in the middle, perhaps, between the NASDAQ's bullishness and the more um, sideways and neutral patterns of the S&P and Dow. In terms of other markets, crude oil, you see, has um, had this big retracement and has broken out above the recent swing high. Um, though has essentially gone into consolidation since that point, though um, its uh, return back to support that has held thus far. And we often do see breakouts do come back and test their previous resistance, now turn support. It certainly has done that, and that support, most importantly, has held thus far. My expectation is that we're going to go up and visit this 5167 area somewhere in the near future with crude oil. In terms of um, gold, of course, gold had the big famous breakdown. The question we have is, is this a breakdown similar to this action where it breaks out of a bullish pattern and then comes and basically reverses all that action, undercuts, just to then turn around and turn bullish and set another new all-time high. I suspect that this will do just that. But that being said, um, gold has been such a sloppy technical pattern all year. It's really hard to have any kind of confidence and probabilities um, in that. In terms of the bonds, bonds have been breaking down and 
and are basically down here at this prior level of swing support. So um, we continue to see uh, bonds kind of um, trying to break down the equities, um, you know, really having difficulty breaking up. Uh, and um, everybody seems to be in a bit of a stalemate, but bonds certainly have been more active than the others. And indeed, if you look across the interest rate sensitive areas, here's utilities very much like the bonds, and then the REITs very much like the bonds. Uh, many of these defensive sectors have certainly had um, um, some real difficulties. Here's transportation also. Um, been in a sideways consolidation pattern. So it's been very difficult to kind of see anything achieving much of anything other than on the individual stock basis um, on these um, primary markets. Well, that should be enough on the charts. Let's go ahead and go to the daily report. We were talking about the fact that we're up against um, resistance and indeed overall intermediate term phase opinion still is market phase four up against resistance. Uh, we're waiting to see if it either breaks resistance or it breaks the diagonal support that either one of those activities would likely change our market phase. In terms of the three market timing signals, um, we've had some changes here and confirmed uptrend from the first signal from IBD that's still bullish. GMI index has dropped to a three out of six, but still retained the buy signal that's been in place since 9.22. The more sensitive GMI2 has also dropped to a seven out of eight. Most of the change is in this decision point. We continue to see this chattering and these short-term signals back and forth. And I don't even know how many we signal changes we had this last week. Um, a lot of signal changes. And this is classic when you get um, some uh, coiling action and you get frankly whatever indicator you're using you get lots of turnings and lots of arrow changes and so forth and um, but bottom line is where is our current readings well in the short term mixed 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 and then in intermediate term the Dow certainly is mixed on the long term everything is mixed so very 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 kind of chatter kind of um, activity coming out of that indicator. In terms of position sizing opinions, they're both still holding at 100%. Intermediate term market posture, again, more chatter. We're once again in the first day, again, weak bear signal. And you see the S&P has gone to a 52.9 um, on the down slope. So um, that intermediate term market posture has chattered back to bearish. Don't read too much about bearish or bullish on this as of the last week. Um, when you get these flip-flopping back and forth with first day signals going both directions, what this is really saying is that we're neutral. And um, we are finely balanced neutral. So much as we've seen in price action and other views of the market, this is saying the same thing. In terms of the strength of the trend, it's still you know up above at 80, but it's been following in recent weeks. So just kind of that makes sense as we've been in this coiling pattern, and yet we're in a coiling pattern near all-time highs. We're in a slightly downward slope, um, but we're above 80. So you know slightly bearish, and yet at the same time above 80. So, you know, that is considered to be bullish and we can be above 80 for prolonged periods of time as it can oscillate up there in some periods. So, um, again, finely balanced. Overall hedge warning status, we've toyed a couple times with going to level one, um, but we've never actually broken down through that diagonal support. Um, so this situation, while we say it's finely balanced, this hedge warning status is um, very easily could go to a level one if we break down through that um, uh, that that pattern that we have of late and we could see that the risk to the market would ele elevate and accelerate very quickly if that were to happen so um, don't get too kind of complacent with the fact that we've been at zero plus during this whole period. At the same time, if this were to actually finally resolve to all-time highs, then the zero plus would probably just hold right there. So um, 
this is a situation that is um, uh, right on the edge of potentially seeing some changes, but not yet. Option income strategies, VIX is inside the acceptable window to initiate new positions for novice traders, cover calls, and put selling. No changes here whatsoever. Uh, and if you think about the price action of this last week, it really doesn't call for any changes yet. So quite defensive, still this two to one ratio of in the money and out of the money strikes, two to one ratio of low beta, high beta, but no change from what you heard last week. Also in terms of the specific warnings area, only thing that's read here is this high distribution day count on the S&P and uh, trend base nothing really here of note under the intermarket risk aversion indicators all five are nominally risk on uh, sentiment also quite neutral I mean this is about as neutral as you can get there's only one little piece of red and all those different indicators that we look to see you know where the market is and the fear and greed index, almost perfectly pegged to the middle neutral um, stance. So again, more and more of that. Even when we go down to the sector specific, breath. You know, basically about half of this thing's green and about half of it's red. Um, this time though, we did see with Friday's action, mostly the... Um, Defensive sectors were the ones in top, though healthcare and financials were also, you know, uh, up here in this area as well. Um, most of these that were more severely negative were the high beta areas, so, um, you know, a bit more give up on that side on Friday. And what a mess over here in terms of, you know, holding up. Uh, in terms of all three market postures, only energy and financials are still holding on to their intermediate as well as short and long term market postures all being up. So this would seem to point to some deterioration, but remember that many of these lines are just finally wrapped one around another and they flip flop and also create signals. So while Friday's action was down and made many of these look uh, worse. Uh, it, I would suggest it makes them look worse than they probably really are. These are also, frankly, showing a finely balanced market postures, easy to flip either direction. And percent change, you know, pretty negative all the way across the board. And indeed, uh, while mostly mildly so, but notice also there's a five day and the one month and all but two exceptions are also negative and even those technology which has been doing pretty well in recent weeks is only up by one percent on the one month time frame now the three month much much stronger also energy which had been much more strongly up in the longer time frames has only you know squeaked out something less than a one percent um, positive move in the last trading month so I um, ultimately will not be surprised if we see either a breakdown or a break up. In terms of the relative rotation graph, you know, everything's kind of tailing down a little bit except FDN. Thankfully, we're, we're holding that position. We have some FDN in the core portfolio. Uh, but as you look at the others, well, these are very strong and very much high right corner that's where you like it to be but they're also the the most recent postures is is starting to tail down and weaken ever so uh ever so slightly other areas mostly these real estate and utility and stuff like that these interest rate sensitive certainly have been coming from where they had been and now you know several weeks in a row of tailing off so you can see the the breakdowns there XSD, Semiconductor, Biotech, Internet Fund, and Regional Banking continue to be the ones that are populating those upper areas. So that's enough for that. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. We're coming right into 20 minutes. So disclaimers, of course. We always have to do the disclaimers. And uh, hit the pause button if you need more time to review the disclaimers. Also note the hyperlink down here at the bottom for the full set of disclosures. We'll be back here next for tomorrow's market preview session from Falcon Global. In the meantime, manage your trade risk. And if you do that well, 
just about everything else should fall into place over time. Good trading. Go learn something.